welcome to Crime and Justice. In this video, we're looking at the mass shooter shooting of Colt Gray and his father in court. But first of all, let's just go over the story a bit so that we know what's happening. Georgia school shooting timeline. What did parents and police know and when? Barrow County, is that, would that be Georgia? I don't know, yeah, Georgia. Colt Gray, a ninth grader, has been charged with four felony murders after he allegedly took an AR-style weapon to Appalachee High School on September 4th and shot 13 people, killing four. But details shed light on potential warning signs missed prior to the tragic events. Here's the timeline of what we know so far. May 21st, 2023. An interview between Colt Gray, his father Colin Gray and the Jackson County Sheriff's Office took place after the FBI received a tip regarding a threat to shoot up a school, allegedly made on a gaming app. Colt told, told investigators he did not make those threats. During the interview, his father admitted there were guns in the house but stated they were not loaded. Colin described taking his son hunting, explaining his efforts to encourage Colt to spend more time outdoors and less time playing video games. Hmm. Now, people say watching video games, they can't take it too, too serious and bring it into the real life. Well, his father actually done that by taking him into real life and taking him hunting. Colin also claimed he'd been up to the school multiple times, blamed it on other kids touching his son and said Colt wanted to move out of school discreet. While, while authorities were unable to substantiate the tip, County Jail Sheriff's Office reportedly alerted the school to monitor Colt. An email obtained by Fox 5 shows the Sheriff's Captain informing the FBI we have made school we have made area schools aware and will monitor this subject. However, Colt later moved with his father to a different county, enrolling in Apalachee High School in Barrow County. It remains unclear whether the alert from Jackson County was communicated to Colt's new school or what monitor monitoring would have entailed in this situation. November 20, 23. Last year, Colt's mother, Marcy, Marseille, was arrested for scratching her husband's truck and during the war officers of arrest, officers found meth, methamphetamine. Sentencing old and glass piping her possession. She was sentenced in December 2023 to 40 day, 46 days in jail. August 20, 2024. One week prior to the shooting, teachers at the school had been supplied with special identification cards with panic buttons. While authorities credit the ID card with preventing the school shooting from being worse than it was, the action still came too late to stop killings. September 4th, Georgia school shooting. On September 4th, the accused shooter Colt Gray left his algebra 1 class at the beginning of the class. He supposedly returned to the class but was unable to get in because the door was locked. He then went to the classroom next door and opened fire. About 40 minutes later, two sheriff's deputies and two school resource officers enter, entered the school. Okay, 40 minutes later. Wow. Wow, that's a long time. A school, a resource officer encountered the subject, suspect who was armed. The suspect put his gun down and immediately surrendered to the authorities. That afternoon, during a press briefing, the Georgia Bureau of Investigation, GBI, said four people were killed and nine were hospitalised with injuries. 
Law enforcement likes to provide another update on the shooting and the status of the investigation. It is revealed that the accused shooter used an AR-style we- weapon. They also identified the two teachers and two students who were killed. September the 5th, Colt's father arrested. On September the 5th, the suspect Colt was moved overnight to Gainesville Youth Regional Detention Centre. It was announced that Colt's father had been placed under arrest and would be charged with four counts of involuntary manslaughter, two counts of second-degree murder and eight counts of cruelty to children. Now, they are going after the parents now. When a child does a mass shooting, is involved in a mass shooting, they are going after the parents as well now. And to be honest with you, I agree with that. Because apparently they br- the father brought him. The rifle he used was the rifle his father brought him for Christmas. Who buys? How old was he? Let's have a look. A 14-year-old. A rifle. Right. Who does that? So yeah, it should be held. Colt and Colin Gray made first appearance in court on September the 6th. Holt made his first appearance in Barto County Courtroom. The charges were read to him along with possible sentences, and he was informed that his pre- preliminary hearing would be scheduled for December the 4th. His father, Colin, also made his first appearance in court, and charges and possible sentences were also read to him. He was gave, given the same preliminary date as his son. Later, CNN reported that Marcy, the mother of the suspect, had warrants out for arrest for offen- offences allegedly committed in November 2023, including possession of fentanyl and meth, along with using a false placing, false license plate. This has not been confirmed by Fox TV stations. So that's story so far. So we're going to look at some videos where they discuss this case, and we're going to well, we're going to be looking at I think mainly the court trial one, right? So when he was brought into court, his face was not shown. And um, the same with the father. His face was not shown when he's brought into school. Don't know if that's some sort of law they have in that state. We don't know. But we are going to sit and watch the court case. It's just... Hi, good morning, sir. You Mr. Colt Gray? Sir. My name's Curry Minglethorpe. I'm assigned to preside over this morning's proceedings. Mr. Gray, I do need to inquire as to whether you're able to read and write the English language. All right. Um, I also want to inform you. Uh, well, I want to ask you, do you understand that you have the right to be represented by an attorney in these proceedings? And you are, in fact, represented today. Is that correct? And Mr. Zane Harmon, you're here on behalf of this defendant. Is that right? Yes, sir. All right. And you understand that you have the right to be continuously represented? throughout this proceeding if you cannot afford to be to hire counsel and this court is obligated under the constitution to provide counsel for you uh, without cost to you all right i am going to inform you of a few other matters um and i'm not going to ask you anything i just, just inform you so one is i want to make sure that you are aware that you have the right to remain silent you don't have to say anything at all and it's important to understand that because anything you might say uh, could be used against you at further proceedings associated with your case. Um, I want to inform you of the charges that you currently face. Um, in essence, you are charged with four counts of felony murder, as outlined in um, in a state warrants that have been issued against you. I want to make you aware that the maximum penalty 
for felony murder. Uh, uh, so for each count, the maximum penalty is that you could be punishable by death, by imprisonment for life, without parole, or by imprisonment for life, with the possibility of parole. Uh, if you have any questions about these charges, then uh, I would urge you to discuss those with your attorney. Um, I would invite you, Mr. Harmon, to inform the court as to whether there's a request for bond at this time. At this time, Your Honor, there is not a request for bond. We will file the appropriate motions if that becomes necessary. All right. Uh, um, an indictment by the grand jury for most felony offenses or accusations. Um, uh, well, you have the right to, to receive an indictment uh, for these offenses. And uh, I assume uh, Mr. Brad Smith is here on behalf of the DA's office, or he is the district attorney, and he's uh, accompanied by Ms. Patricia Brooks, who is his chief assistant. Um, a preliminary hearing, you have the right also to a preliminary hearing, uh, unless you make a bond, which of course at this point there's no bond being requested, or unless you waive such a hearing. You have the right to a speedy public trial by a judge or jury. You have the right to confront and cross-examine all witnesses. You have the right to call witnesses on your own behalf and testify in your own defense if you so choose. As you sit here in this courtroom today, under the law, you are presumed innocent. Uh, your refusal to testify at any point uh, in any proceeding will not be used against you in determining whether you're guilty or not guilty. Counsel, let me just inquire as to there, whether there are any other uh, items that the court should address before we conclude this preliminary hearing. There. there. I do have one piece of information the court. There was a development yesterday afternoon that makes it necessary for our office to have alternate counsel appointed and arrangements have already been made in that regard. I've already explained that to Mr. Gray. The alternate counsel will be appointed by the end of the day today. All right. Thank you very much, Ms. Donna Gray. All right. Then uh, with that, this hearing is concluded and you may escort Mr. Bennett out. If you haven't already done so, please go and like this video. Share this video, and if this is what you like, true crime with no drama, where we follow missing cases of children and adults and murder cases like this, mass shootings and whatever, and we follow them through from day one up through to the court case and trial and sentencing. So if this is what you like, please Go and please consider subscribing. It's all free, doesn't cost a penny. Right, let's continue. All right, with that, I understand that we have a, another um, appearance hearing. Um, and at this hearing, I'm I'm, going to, I'm first going to ask you to... Now, this is the father, right? And he was brought in literally straight after. Cold, the son. A few, a few questions, and then I'm going to advise you of your rights and, and uh, also let you know about a preliminary hearing that's been scheduled um, for you. Um, why don't you just state... Your name, please. Right. Pull the microphone down, please. Um, there you go. All right, and uh, how old are you, Mr. Gray? 54. And are you able to read and write, understand English language? Not yes, any sir. difficulty? Yes, sir. Uh, how far how did you go to school? Uh, 11th grade, GED. Okay. Um, and I note that you have <clears throat> counsel seated with you at the table. Do you understand you have the right to be represented by an attorney at all times uh, for this and all future proceedings in your case? Yes, sir. Uh, and do you understand that, of course, if you cannot afford an attorney, that the public defender will be appointed to 
the system is working in. All right, so um, following our questions that I'm going to ask, I'm just informing you of some things. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say they can be used against you at further hearings or at the trial on the charges that you're facing. Uh, for this hearing, you're not going to be questioned about that facts and circumstances surrounding uh, your charges. Um, you are currently charged with this, and you'll be provided with copies of the warrants if you don't already have them. You're currently charged with uh, two counts of felony murder in the second degree. Uh, you're charged with four counts of <clears throat> felony involuntary manslaughter. You're charged with with eight counts of felony cruelty to children in the second degree. Uh, for these offenses, uh, for the, the felony murder counts um, in the second degree, felony murder in the second degree, uh, the maximum imprisonment, the maximum penalty for each count is up to 30 years uh, imprisonment. For felony involuntary manslaughter, uh, of course, again, there are four counts, the maximum uh, penalty for, for each of those offenses is 10 years uh, imprisonment. For the eight felony cruelty to children counts, um, the maximum penalty under the law for each of those eight counts is 10 years uh, imprisonment. For a maximum total uh, possible penalty for the charges that you currently are facing of 180 years imprisonment. If you have questions about the charges, which I assume that you will, the court urges you to discuss those with your attorney. Um, let me inquire as to whether there's a motion for bond. If, uh, if Mr. Gray is moving for bond at this time. No, sir, not at this time. We will allow um, alternate counsel to make that decision. All right, thank you. I also need to inform you that you have the right to an indictment by a grand jury, um, uh, and you also uh, have the right to a preliminary hearing unless you make bond or waive uh, uh, such a hearing. You have the right to a speedy and public trial by a judge or, or jury. You have the right to confront and cross-examine all witnesses. You have the right to call witnesses on your own behalf and testify in your own defense uh, if you so choose. I want to make it clear to you, uh, Mr. Gray, that you are presumed innocent. Your refusal to testify at any point but will not, cannot be used against you in determining whether you're guilty uh, or not guilty. I mentioned the first appearance hearing a moment ago. That is uh, being set for you. Uh, for December 4th, 2024, at 8.30 a.m. Uh, currently, that's set to take place in the Magistrate Court of Barrow County. Uh, it could be subject to change, but I just want you to know that that is the date that we currently have. In fact, Council, could you approach, please? I have um, this. Uh, let's see, I think it scratches that. This document that discusses bond and, and gives the date of preliminary, preliminary hearing. I could, uh, I could sign that. Give it to you. And then the warrants are passed. Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, I would like for him to sign it.
can or they just copy of the warrants? Those are provided and they say service copies on them, so I assume that they're for him. Okay. Sergeant Prisco, do you concur with that? So those copies are for? Yes, sir. For the detention center? So he's got his own copies? So he'll have them provided? Right. All right. So the detention center wants to hold out of those. All right, let me, yeah, and thank you, Missy Graves. I want to um, certainly acknowledge the presence of our district attorney, Mr. Brad Smith, and he's assisted by his chief assistant, Patricia Brooks. Is there anything else, counsel, that uh, the court needs to address that I have neglected to address? Thank you. Yes, sir, not at this time. All right, uh, I do want to thank uh, those who are in the gallery who have an interest and who have appeared. I appreciate the decorum that has been maintained throughout these, this proceeding or both of these proceedings today. And with that, uh, this matter is adjourned. So let us know what you think in the comments. Do you think they are right to go after the parents? Do you think he will get the full charges, like the 30 years for the first four charges and so on? Do you think he'll get all the 30 years for each case? Let me know. I'm curious. I'd like to see your views and your opinions on this. We will be following this case. Subscribe, that way you get updated on every time a video is put out, every time I go live, and you don't miss nothing. Okay, till then, thank you for being here with me.